All right, hello, and welcome back to my RTS in Unity tutorial. Today, we're going to be starting a couple of episodes on basically actions that the uh, that we're going to make have the units perform, like uh, moving, gathering resources, attacking, etc. I'm dividing it up into smaller episodes because I'm just going to try and explain one concept at a time. That'll, that'll like work in tandem. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And I'll just go quickly onto it. So you see, uh, if I can just zoom in a little, uh, we've now got uh, three different sprites. Uh, we've got an archer there, which you can't really see. Uh, we've got a peasant and hoplite. So if we select all of them, I'm just gonna right click here. So yeah, you'll see how the blonde dude did not move and that is a just a demonstration of the action system or like the action checking system so basically once you've performed an action say you're hovering over a weak tile and eventually i'm just going to fire a ray cast down at uh the weak tile and say all right this is a weak tile do we have any units selected that can work weak tiles uh so if there are any peasants selected they'll move to the tile and start working it, so they'll say wait there for ten seconds, gather some wheat, and then take it to some kind of storehouse, mill, whatever. But if you some of say like a hoplite or an archer, you can't work wheat tiles, but you can just move to the tile. So instead of getting the work action, you will get the uh, just to move to the tile action. So yeah, that's uh, basically what I'm trying to achieve here. So I will go over and explain the code. No. Right, so to implement this, first off, we added a virtual string to the action master class, or parent class, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically, it's just a, a type. It returns a string, so in the parent class that shouldn't be used for an action because it doesn't really do anything, it just returns default. But if we use the move to location action, it'll return uh, movement. So basically this is just uh defining what type of action we use in a way that we can change it for each of the uh each of the types of actions and then this is then used by I think it's a unit must class yeah because we also implement a, a virtual bool in the unit mass class and we've also implement started creating uh different unit types so we've got hoplite worker and archer somewhere okay. uh basically this takes in the action uh and remember that even if we just have action here we can put uh, action underscore move to location because it inherits action which is nice uh, and basically what it does it gets type and return if it can if you the particular unit type can perform that action so it'll return true suggesting saying so the, the which is then used by the uh, unit order script to move uh, apply the action, and then if we can't perform it, so I'll say if it was default, it would return false. And I think for the archer, we're returning false false on all of them, just to demonstrate that it'll not perform the action if it is false. And then for hoplites, we are returning true, and for workers, we also return true. So I'll just demonstrate that. So I'll just stop here. Uh, you see, he's the archer with his little bow, which is pretty hard to see. It'd probably help for a quick scene, wouldn't it? Uh, okay, I'll just move these guys over here. Hopefully you can still see them. And I'll just demonstrate that if we click there, and right click here, the archer doesn't move because it can't move, use the movement actions, but the two hoplites can. The archer is still selected so if we were to have say fire at location as an action just a hypothetical one that it'd still be able to do it and all that I mean, yeah. you can still do the single click and stuff for it now these actions are I did a little change to the command units move uh, basically what we do uh, I've reworked it so this bit is the same, so we get the unit mass class. Uh, then we apply the action 
first we apply uh, we add the action to the game object of the unit we're trying to make do the action and then we use the unit mask class which will return the instance of the unit so if it's got like an archer script in it it'll return that if it's got a half light it'll return that etc and basically it checks all right if we can do that so it gets the uh, string from the action type and then passes it into the can we perform action or uses the action to get it but you know what i mean and then if we can do that it'll do it else it will destroy the uh, it will destroy the component we added so it just like doesn't have a build up of actions that take up memory and that uh, is there else I think I had a list of things that I had to do. That I put somewhere. Uh, but I can't remember where I put them. Oh well. Uh, and eventually in the future we'll have... Uh, I've also made some kind of check. Uh, well, not some kind of check. It was a check basically to check that uh, where the user has clicked is a valid tile. So it is within the game world. And if, say you were to move, I'll just demonstrate it. So say if we did that, we've got the unit selected and we've right clicked on the outside of the game world. So since there are no tiles in the blue area, no, no instructions are done, but if we click here, we can see that they are moving towards the uh, place and we've still got actions queued up. So it queues up actions. And this is the list of things, which move into locations and you'll see, and yeah. I'm a bit ill, as you can tell. Well, I'm just on the tail end of a cold over Christmas. But it's my birthday tomorrow, so yay. And if you've not subscribed, could you subscribe just for over the end of the New Year's, just so I can hit 500 and say, yeah, I've done that. And then like unsubscribe on the 2nd of January or something. If you want to. You know, you could just stay subscribed. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But yeah. Uh, what else? I think that was it, actually. Yeah, so in the future, we'll be... Well, in the future, I say in the future, within the next week, maybe 28th, 29th, I'll be adding more actions. So I basically say, uh, I've got sort of recursive, I don't know what do we call it, recursive actions, where like say, it'd be an action, but it'd be made up of more than one action. So say, you'd have uh, gathering food, you'd have one action to take him to the food, then within the food action, you'd have like say, all right, wait here till you've got like a hundred food or something. Then go to the uh, go to a store in the location. Then if you don't have another action in the list to do, you go to you go back to the field and get more wheat, and you keep doing that repeatedly until you are given another order. So that's the kind of thing I was looking to implement next time, and. Possibly the movement fix for when you've got multiple units selected so they don't all appear on top of each other. But that's something it'll be easy enough to do. Just gotta do. Yeah. So cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, go check out my stuff on itch.io. The links will be in the description below. Uh, anything else? Still working on loud or quiet. Still doing that procedurally generated roguelike. I think I'll probably have an update for them sometime in January, because I've been working on the new FBI folder type cutscenes, and I've actually got a gameplay loop now in my roguelike, so I might actually not fail uni this year, which I didn't do the years before, but, you know, whatever. So yeah, cheers for watching, bye.